when you did hear that the Taliban um, just took over the government like that, did you feel like, oh man, this, you know, women's rights are now, you know, going back to like 20 years ago? Because people outside of Afghanistan, they don't even appreciate what the state of women's rights were like back in 20 years ago. So maybe you can just talk about what the women's rights were like 20 years ago. See, 20 years ago, I was probably three years old walking around somewhere in a <laughs> yeah. but, uh, but I'm going to be honest, women's rights were existent before the 80s. Uh, we had voting rights, we had political representative rights, we had women in oh, the really? leadership. Oh, yeah. We had this healthcare minister, Minister Nozai, in the 60s, if I'm not wrong. Uh, and she was uh, the first woman minister in Afghanistan. I mean, in the 60s, there was still conflicts in the US and all these areas. We wouldn't have women in those positions. But we had women in those, uh, in the, those positions. Of course, elite women, but there was a women. That's the first thing. The second thing is we had voting rights. We had women in universities. We had women in schools. We had uh, the educational directorates filled with women. So I just don't want to say that it's a new concept to us. It is an old concept to us. Even in our villages, I come from a very tribal family. Um, I am the second generation that has been like, you know, educated in schools and all that. We used to be, back in the day, my grandmother was educated by a home teacher, a tutor, and that's how it has been in the past. So even in the past, my grandmother, she was the woman leader of the whole village, right? And then my grandfather was the male leader of the whole village. So it's not that first thing it's an uh, it's just introduced to us we had women rights even when women rights were not in the talks or they were not a subject to be discussed there was afghanistan had accepted women as part of society and culture and tradition so that's the first thing the second thing yes in the past 40 years women rights have been robbed violated destroyed and introduced with different mascots that's true that's very true. They have been politicized. They have been used to legitimize a war. All those things happened. And you have to talk about all those uh, aspects. But even 20 years ago, women did go to an underground school. Women tried working. Women tried sustaining and surviving. And that is um, important for me. And I just don't want to dismiss uh, that notion of like, you know, what women, women were like, you know, in a victim state, they were fighting through it. They were warriors, they were fighters. They ran underground school, they ran hospitals. Uh, there were women who were trying to teach even when there was nothing existent in Afghanistan. And now 20 years later, the Taliban took over. It came in as a shock, I'm gonna be honest. Uh, I mourned it, I cried, I sobbed, I had puffy eyes in majority of my interviews because I kept on crying. But then at the same time, I know if the 90s women uh, survived it, we will survive it. That's true. That's gonna happen. And the second thing that you have to understand that the, uh, the Taliban right now are looking for legitimacy and Afghan women are not the sort of women that they were in the 90s. World is more interconnected today. Afghan women have more resources. They are seem resilient women like they were in the 90s, but they have more resources at their disposal and they can use all those, right? So every time there is a violation, they can just reported on Facebook, if not to the, their authorities on Facebook, on Twitter, and it takes time, but there is a notion like, you know, a momentum set in place. So I wouldn't just say that it's a new concept to us. Women rights have been violated. There was no schools. There were no health cares. Women were expected to have a C-section without um, uh, drugs. That's how, that's the state of our women rights in the 90s. But right now we know that there is a fighting uh, feeling and we fight back. We sustain our, uh, war, like, you know, it's the battle you pick. So this is the battle that we pick right now and we are fighting it. Maybe give us some examples of like how much the women's rights were violated. Do you have specific examples back in those days? What couldn't you do as a woman? You couldn't walk without a mahram. So for example, if your husband died in the war against Soviets, you couldn't walk without a male chaperone. Mm. Out. 
you couldn't go shopping, you could, couldn't go to do work, you couldn't go to the doctor, work was out of topic, but of course other things. Uh, you could, couldn't go to a doctor, you couldn't go to uh, something that he needed, you couldn't go to someone's house, that was out of the topic, you couldn't teach, you couldn't learn anything of those reasons. How was that enforced? So they say, oh, you can do this, you can go out by yourself, but what if you did? Because you had to. If you did, you were lashed. Lashed? Yeah. Like in public? Oh yeah, definitely. I don't think so. You have seen the videos, but few women were lashed for every minor thing that they did. I remember my auntie telling me, my father's cousin, and she's like, you know, one of the family members was wearing high heels. Yeah. Back in the 90s, I know it's very uh, white privilege if I say like this, but it's like one of those silly examples that you want to give. Um, she was wearing high heels and she was wearing burqa and she was with her male husband. Um, and she goes out and then all of a sudden someone sees her, the Taliban patrolling there. And they are like, why did you wear high heels? What did you want to do? You want to uh, get attention? And then she was taken in and she was lashed. Oh. around 30 and then that, that that's something that stuck with me like all the time i always remember that like even a heel wearing a choice that you could have made back in the day could have like you know caused in lash public shame is a very bad thing in us a very bad thing in us uh, you know you lose your honor as a woman mm. you should understand that so that's something that uh, they used to do back in the day what what else? You couldn't learn. You couldn't practice medicine. You couldn't teach. You couldn't work. Uh, you couldn't go out. Apart from all those things, you couldn't celebrate the weddings with um, traditional music and all that. Uh, there was no in-house dancing or something like that. And if they knew, they would come and raid your house. Um, ap uh, apart from that, you couldn't have TV at your home. No music devices. Nothing like that. So all those things. Uh, then what can you do, or what could you have done as a woman? know what do they expect of people i don't know because people already pray in afghanistan everybody prays everybody in my family prays five times and every time you miss a prayer you have a public shaming of your own like you know in that was uh, game of thrones shame shame thing that yeah. goes on in your family all the time they're like you missed a prayer oh my god shame on you blah 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 but then I don't know what the Taliban expected anyways. It's not like they go after every woman and uh, rape them or like, you know, sexually assault them or something like that. It's more in a sense, uh, like, you know, there is more early child marriages that are more legitimized. Uh, that's something that we should be worried about. Um, early child marriages are legitimized because in a sense, they're like a girl, a girl is menstruating, she should be married off. Um, that's something that's scary because the more young girl is married, the more young early childhood pregnancies, less doctors, less uh, like, you know, taking care of the girl and more casualties. My young girl who's around 12, 13 is menstruating. If she's married off uh, in the coming two to three years, uh, she will face a lot of sexual and uh, marital rape which is something oh. that people don't talk about and it's very normalized. Um, and uh, even the West, it's a very, uh, like, you know, in alien concept, people don't like talking about it. People are uncomfortable. So these are the things that are reality on the ground. At the same time, uh, schools closing down, it's a huge violation. Um, women not being able to work, that's a violation. Women not being able to practice their political acts, that's a violation. So I'm going to talk about what is actually happening, which is like, you know, less of sexual assaults. I don't think that sexual assaults is like one of those. Uh, a highlight of the Taliban regime right now, because all the women will be inside a majority of them don't have mobilization and all that. And even with that, the Taliban, even if going out inside their houses, majority of them are directed not to assault, not even to look at a woman. Taliban are violating a lot of rights right now. And you have to accept that they are less educated. They are more in the, uh, into mountains. They have never used uh, a public administration office. They have never ran a one. They have never had an education for that. But at the same time, the people who did also violated the rights of women. So it's not just one side, it's both sides. Both have done their uh, like you know fair share of uh, violating women rights and we just like you know in things like that in Afghanistan back in the day people ignored it or it was not reported 
And now, for the Taliban, the world is looking. So I just want to highlight that both these times, women were violated and nobody checked them. And now the Taliban, I don't trust them because the world is watching. So they're behaving in capital uh, uh, and their leaders are. When the world looks away, God knows what they will do. Who's going to hold them accountable? Nobody.